I recently joined Micron and working on some of the exciting features of memory management, uh, particularly to serve the CX of memory as a software sharing and software pooling as such. And other than that, to give this is something like um, an interest line that comes whenever that you talk about yourself. So, like I've been working with Linux kernel uh, around 24 years as such. And I've worked on like product development for networking, storage, enterprise systems, as well as like mobile SOC development, particularly for uh, Android based kernel development as such. And to talk about my passion, other than the coding that we do as a system programmer, I also like uh, passionate about mentoring, guiding people. Those who are interested in open source technologies, Linux systems, and kernel systems, as such. And I've been involved in like mentoring team members within the company as well as like a Linux communities. Uh, last, I think, two, three months back, I took some sessions, uh, like free kernel drug development sessions. And um, it was very surprising and good to see that. It, a lot of people are really interested in open source technologies, like the system development as well as the ecosystem and willingness to contribute back to the community as such. And other than that, uh, personally I like tracking, uh, reading, meditation and of course work in the systems as such. So what we are going to today cover up is understand what the BPF is and how it works and then how it is helpful for observability as such when we can talk about security uh, from a security point of view with some examples uh, using the BPF tools and framework as such. So uh, this is like a very common understanding we have about the BPF that ethical technology uh, that allows the programmers to run the programs without modifying the kernel or without adding the additional kernel modules as such. And you can consider it as a virtual machine inside the kernel where the programs can, where the uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, programs can be executed and those programs can be customized based on the use cases as such. So the, the use case is particularly for security. Then the, uh, the Security engineers uh, can, impl uh, can implement the programs as per the security policies. If the use case is for monitoring uh, or observing the system, particularly for performance or for threats or something as such activity, in that case, the BPF program can be accordingly uh, programmed as such. So basically, this uh, functionality that included um, uh, quite entry dot aging kernel where uh, as as this it's not a new for feature as such it was been there since long time particularly target for packet filtering as such but then it was been extended to support the other operations and that came through this number of the features that got in including the bpf system call where the different bpf programs can be loaded as such and that's how it evolved to be called as extended BPF as such. So basically, uh, these words can be used, uh, BPF or extended, very exchangeable as such. And how exactly does it work is that these EBF programs, they are event-driven and they can be attached to the some kernel control path as such. Uh, if, you, uh, if the requirement from um, is to monitor some activity in suppose in the networking stack or, or file system stack, then these EBU programs can be uh, attached to that control path and the uh, necessary data can be collected based on which other intelligence can be applied for the further actions as such. And um, this code path contains the specific triggers that call as hooks as such and there are various hooks at um, various subsystems like uh, the hooks can uh, includes like network even system calls function entries and trace kernel trace parts means of course this is not a very uh, not uh, not just the limited but there are uh, various places the hooks can be attached 
And when they are triggered, the code is uh, the code that is the BPF code is compiled uh, compiled into a byte code that would get loaded into the kernel memory. And uh, in turn, the byte code has to be verified because these BPF programs that we are loading from the user space uh, into the kernel address space. So uh, there has to be some security measurements to be fulfilled that. Uh, it is not going to tamper the system. It's, that is the work that has been done by the verifier, BPF verifier, that verifies before before it is executed. And some of the, the things that should be looked up as uh, it does not contain a cyclic dependency or loop as such, so that this, it might uh, the BPF program might end up in executing a loop and causing a system hang as such. So those things are being uh, taken care uh, are been um, checked, verified by the verifier as such. So basically, it does the work of uh, preventing the program from compromising uh, the kernel or the system accidentally or on purpose as such. And once the program uh, is uh, triggered at the hook, then uh, with the help of the help function, the, the APB whole framework, um, has, with the help of this APB uh, help functions, you can collect the data, and that data can be passed for, uh, to the uh, user space as such. So this APB framework has a number of con um, data structure constraints for transferring the data from kernel to the user space as such. Uh, this is just to give an, an example like how exactly the BPF program loading happens. Here in this case, we, uh, take an example of a BPF program that gets attached to the uh, exact system call as such. And um, whenever any binary, any application that executes the exact system call, this particular uh, BPF program would be executed, triggered as such. And then this, this is the way like, um, helps you to get the visibility of the overall execution, the programs get, getting executed on the system as such. Okay. So uh, uh, just this is this again, I'll uh, going overview to understand how this BP frame program uh, ecosystem as such. So the, the uh, development tool chain uh, for the EP by far is um, basically most of the applications that are using BPF, uh, they might not directly go and write the BPF programs as such. And uh, they might do it through the other um, evolved uh, projects such as Celium, uh, BCC, or BF, uh, BPF trace uh, to utilities as such. Uh, so basically, like if uh, you as a developer, as product development using BPU framework, then in that case, the developers can write the um, programs either in C language, or Rust, Lua, or Python as such. And uh, when uh, uh, programs, they take help of this Libba BPF library as such that helps to um, like go and access particular kernel data structures and parse these kernel data structures or parse the data once one it has been collected to the user space. For all those operations, this uh, lib, uh, BPF library is quite handy as such. So uh, uh, every BPF program uh, might not be necessary to know the every kernel data structure, how, how does it look, what are the um, data elements that it might want to extract. So in the, uh, of course, can directly go and do it, but using the library functions, uh, this, this, this comes at uh, much handy as such. And uh, the BPF programs, they are being compiled into the bytecode and the LLVM uh, CLang uh, compiler has been used. And like uh, the, the, the two main uh, front ends when you talk of BPF uh, uh, framework as um, the BPF compiler con uh, collection, there's a set of tools as such, BCC, and the BF, uh, BPF trace. This is uh, basically a utility as such. <laughs> So basically, if you're uh, looking for running the tools, uh, for tools to run, then you can use the BCC tools that are there developed uh, uh, to uh, collect this information as such. As a first, uh, if you're trying first, then you go with the BCC tools. And then you can, if you want to write your own programs, maybe like some one-liners kind of thing, then the uh, BPF trace uh, tool can be used. 
And like if you are going and do MOCAS analysis on the data that is collected, adding more logic to that, uh, on that, in that case, the, uh, you can implement the BPF program either using uh, Python, Go, Rust, or C as such. And there, in that case, you can, um, based on the requirement, whether you want to use some dynamic instrumentation or static instrumentation, either at the kernel level or the user space level, based on that, those programs can be written as such. So basically, BCC framework that enables users to write the Python programs as such. And um, this framework itself it will do the work of uh, running the Python program and generate the bytecode as such. And uh, B B B uh, trace is again a high level tracing language and basically it provides like a kind of uh, syntax to uh, do the uh, uh, pass the commands as such. And these are the uh, repository from where you can get the. Uh, so having uh, got that understanding of BPF, let's look at the observability, how it can be achieved through the BPF as such. So uh, BPF observa uh, observability uh, encompasses like a light yet uh, lightweight through implementation programs designed to monitor the events as such. Observability means what we are, uh, we, the intention is to observe what is happening in, on the system as such. So again, as we have said that the BPF is the just-in-time uh, compilers, which does the work of verifying the BPF program and load into the kernel. And once it is attached, once it is run, then it, um, it gets attached. It's with uh, gets attached to the kernel functions as such. And every time when that uh, particular um, event has been triggered, the hook would be executed as such. And the events, uh, I, I think is this is a bit of a repetition from the, my previous slide, but this is like the events can be the trace, trace points, uh, uh, system call events are uh, uh, not only system calls, but any, any kernel function at entry or exit as such, uh, uh, along with the perf events that is used to collect the performance data means you can attach the pro, uh, EBA programs at the perf events and collect the data of the performance, maybe your schedule or CPU uh, and the other contact switches, all those things can be collected. Then there is another um, event uh, interface where the BPA programs can be added. This is one of the feature recently, uh, and not recently, it got uh, introduced in 5.7 kernel, that is the LSM, LSM interface, that where the BPF programs can be attached to the LSM uh, Linux security model interface, where Linux security model interface is the kernel framework that basically provides a way to um, enforce uh, mandatory access control uh, policies uh, onto the system, more for, from a security point of view. And um, other than that, again, the network interface uh, at the various, um, uh, like, um, at the various levels in the networking, uh, networking layers is like, we can have the uh, BPF hooks can be attached at layer two, layer three, uh, L3, L4, or even the application, like at the socket layer, uh, TCP IP layer, or even at the network driver layer as such, the programs, BPF programs can be attached. So here, uh, this is just a, a broad diagram, talk, uh, elaborating on the storage, storage stack and the network stack as such. Okay. So when we say security absorbability, means observing the system from a security point of view, uh, as like, um, how, how do we go as like, uh, how do you quantify a matrix that uh, to represent the security properties as such? And some of the matrix that uh, comes into more, comes uh, broadly defined are the, um, how do you say, latency, uh, traffic, errors, and saturation. So what we're going to look at, uh, look at these uh, matrix items uh, when we talk about security observability. Means from this point of view of these uh, properties, we can do the analysis as such. And what uh, what are the core events that you should monitor, you would be monitoring when you're talking about the observability, security also it is particularly a process management, then the uh, process management in the sense, 
the life cycle of the whole process, how it is happening, what are the processes that are created, uh, uh, creating, executing, passing data or passing signals, communication, all those things as part of the process events from the networking, uh, traffic as such as the socket uh, earlier and uh, uh, that, that uh, if you can see the file, file system or storage or virtual file system, all those things. Uh, in that case, the file accesses that are happening onto the system. So uh, what we'll look at these uh, four golden signals that uh, governs the mattress for security observability is latency is like when you're monitoring, uh, latency is one of the metrics that uh, taking care of uh, like uh, that uh, monitoring the time it takes to service the request as such. Uh, here in this case, like if you talk about the web service as such, then the the monitoring can be happen on the HTTP traffic as such, how the HTTP request uh, what is the time or, or how much latency it is taking, whether it is the execution um, request is coming response within the refined time uh, expectations or not as such. And again, uh, the observability uh, from that point, distinguishing between the latency of a successful request and latency of the failed request as such. Okay. Then another is uh, about the traffic, like uh, a measurement of how many demand is placed on your uh, uh, how many uh, is placed on your system like um, particularly uh, uh, in a high level system uh, as such like for uh, means how much load your system can handle without getting um, blocked as such or stuck up as such uh, without affecting the latencies of the system responses like again uh, take an example of web service like that would measure the HTTP request per seconds as such. Or in case of audio streaming system, uh, the measurement might focus on the network IO rate or concurrent actions, uh, concurrent sessions that are going for the, uh, for the different stream, uh, audio streams or the applications that are running for the audio streams as such. Another criteria matrix would be the errors like the rate of request means uh, how the uh, monitor the failures that is happening from the uh, applications as such, request failures as such. Uh, again, uh, your, I'm for taking a web service application, uh, like uh, the request, rate of request explicitly, for example, like the HTTP uh, or implicitly by the, uh, this, uh, the 200 success responses that are happening. Or uh, again, the uh, policies, for example, is committed one, I mean, you can have the metrics like um, if the response is not coming within the defined time frame, like one second per uh, response time, then that those, uh, those responses can be considered as errors or not. So uh, this can be one of the criteria based on the policies that are being defined as such. And then another is the saturation, like, how full your service is as such, like a measure of uh, emphasizing uh, the resources that are most constrained as such, like um, on a system, like uh, if you take up a data center as such, so running different services as such, then the, uh, the, uh, the service, the application, various applications that are running uh, and um, how much memory it is consuming in more in a more in a memory constrained systems, memory workloads uh, is one of the criteria that should be monitored very much. And again, it is one, again, that is like uh, one is the performance or the whole of the system health is one thing. Another is from the security that there might be some bad uh, application or assist, uh, some suspicious application that is trying to allocate memory, consuming a lot, uh, lot of memory as such. Okay. Similarly, in case of uh, IO constraint system, monitor the IO load as such. That is the load that might be from the from the application to the data um, to the disk IO as such.
so here uh, means after looking at those different metrics what um, uh, I tried to cover up is that uh, the monitoring can be done at the process level execution level at the networking socket level and at the file access level these are the three examples that have I taken for observability as such so uh, for things what we will do is like um, look at the process execution what what are uh, during this process execution, what are what are the uh, what all information can be monitored and what can be done from that information as such like um, uh, process execution events uh, can give you the full life cycle process like from the start that is forking or executing till the exit that is the uh, 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 exiting the process through the exit system call as such and the information that can be uh, collected or the metadata, what we can say is that the, the binary name, the command line parameters that defines the runtime behavior of the programs, what what were the in, uh, parameters that been passed to that. And then the other information on the process execution as the process uh, uh, ancestry, like that would help to identify any process anomalies like uh, in case um, the shell is trying to uh, uh, a malware has to be executed that that, that would might get exit from the shell so in that case what is the who is the parent process of that uh, that information can be collected from the process execution as such means what the application that has been ex uh, spawned uh, it might be some ma malware or some suspicious uh, application and other information like current working directory as such that would also help to um, identify if there are some hidden malware executions happening from some temporary directories as such. So this directory information uh, is one of the uh, resources to get more visibility from the security point of view. And then other than that, the main, I mean, one of the main thing is the capabilities as such. So capabilities like that defines the effective permanent or inherent capabilities and those are like very much crucial when the capabilities are passed from the parent process to child process and uh, monitoring all those things uh, from security point of view for process execution is uh, helps miss from the uh, like uh, uh, detecting some uh, privileged escalations can be done through the capabilities information and here uh, well for doing this first I, what I will do is I'll use the BCC tools that helps you to get this information and then um, I'll show some examples for the B, uh, uh, BPF programs through the programming as such okay so here in this case, the BCC, BCC tools has a lot of, uh, to, uh, BCC framework has a lot of tools as such, and one of them is the exact snoop as such. So basically this tool does the work of snooping uh, the process and uh, uh, internally it does is like, it traces the um, exact system call as such, like whenever the exact system calls is executed, um, in the basically the exact system call is like what you do is pass the executable name and the in, uh, parameters arguments and the environment variable so the exact snow basically it goes and attaches the bpf program to the exact system call and collects that information so that helps you to show the they shows the files executed its arguments as such okay so let me do one thing For now, uh, okay, what has happened? Let me see. To share, I need to. Sh I need to share my.
I can do with other applications as well, right? Okay, let me see. Okay, I'll do it. For now, please ignore the uh, errors uh, in warnings. I've been doing a lot of. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So for now, just ignore the warnings as such. I've been doing a lot of uh, modification running the program, so there's some mismatch with the libraries as such, load as such. So here in this case, what I've done is uh, started the exact move. Uh, application as such and like suppose if you do let me go back if on another terminal I execute some other command as such so you you would see that uh, the exact snoop uh, captures that command uh, uh, that has been executed so basically here what is happening is like the exact system call, the uh, shell executes the command that is uh, uh, executes the um, command uh, ps command by executing the exact system call as such so exact snoop uh, uh, basically uh, attaches the bp program to the exact system call as such okay so here in this case, what we see is um, we are seeing the process that is executed PS with its PID, parent PID, and the argument as such. So this is one of the tool, uh, BCC tool that uh, basically does the work that gets. So here at first hand, uh, as a beginner, as a starting, you can you, you can use this BCC tools as such. And then uh, another step, next step is like you can add more one-liners using the BPF. Uh, uh, B5 trace as such, and then eventually go and write the actual uh, programs uh, as such. Okay. So, uh, another thing is like network uh, socket monitoring as such, which uh, uh, capturing the network socket gives the uh, it gives uh, gives the ide uh, improved identity or the uh, network packets uh, uh, like um, uh, uh, what the uh, uh, network packets in the sense what the 
data that is flowing through the network interfaces and the, basically when we capture the information at the socket layer or at the socket system calls as such you they are more associated with the uh, process uh, metadata rather than with the actual protocol network protocol as such uh, the below layer layer three uh, protocol as such. So, if you ca uh, capture the information at the sockets as such, so your that can help you to associate the information related to the process with what process has been passing the this information as such, and uh, it basically uh, uh, helpful uh, can be used to detect any data explorations or any unusual behavior that is happening using this socket statistics as such. So basically, um, uh, the observability can be done at the, uh, the programs, BPF programs can be attached to various socket system calls and that information can be commenced. Uh, everything related to the IP address, where it is passing, what is routing information and all that, those things as such. And uh, basically, uh, you can trace the whole life cycle of the packet as such. And uh, some of the things that we talked about is visibility, uh, a process listening to what all connections it is listening, then uh, uh, what if it is accepting any, yeah. Uh, like what? How does that happen? Ah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, like we can get the visibility of what are the connection that is accepting or uh, listening to the different sockets uh, and how other metrics would be data transfer that is ha happening in and out of the connections and the overall the whole life cycle of the socket as such. Then, uh, yeah, so here again, uh, we can look at this with an example with a PCC tool um, that is uh, taking example of TCP connect. This is another tool from the PCC framework that uh, helps you to look at the network traffic as such. So this tool basically traces the TCP connections uh, as such. So uh, and it goes and uh, attaches the BPF program to the connect system call, socket system call as such. And this uh, basically internally, this uh, when you say socket, it is. Uh, going and tracing the kernel, uh, kernel function, that is a TCP v4 connect and TCP v6 connect as such. So all you can do is like you can run a simple curl command on one terminal and run this uh, TCP connect on another terminal and you could be, uh, you'll be able to see uh, the information, uh, the TCP connections that are happening as such. Okay. Okay, let me, I'll just. Okay. Let me do first. Oh, sorry, just a minute. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Some mistake in the system, but basically it's, it has to work uh, the way it has been shown. It is currently not working. 
my bad on that part. So basically, the TCP connect gives you the information like the ID, mm, yeah, the process, the, the source IP address, destination IP address, port, and all this information as such. Uh, so here, this we talk about the socket information as such. Then another is the um, uh, uh, first we go with the process execution, process lifecycle, then the socket lifecycle, and then we'll just look at some of the uh, monitoring that can be done on the file file uh, file access as such. So this file access monitoring uh, provides the uh, ability to monitor the file access that is happening as such, like starting with opening the file, performing read and read and write onto that file through till it, uh, the, the file is closed as such. And uh, uh, in this case, the uh, accessing or monitoring of the file access can be done using the K-probe K hooks are through the trace, trace point hooks as such. And here you can do the uh, observe the system calls related to the files. Uh, uh, system call events and other information related to the file that are up uh, open, that is the file descriptors and the uh, data, metadata associated with that file descriptors. And the metadata that uh, basically can be the uh, path name, that is the file that has been opened, then the, by, uh, the uh, in case of read and write, the bytes that is read and write, written as such, and the size parameter and the other uh, things corresponding to this file access as such. And then again, this open snoop is the uh, tool that can be used uh, uh, that basically this uh, uh, it attaches the BPF program to the open system call and to the variants of the open system call that is open at and all those things. And basically, it provides it will it provides the uh, it shows the information at which processes, which processes are trying to open which set of files as such. And so, from the security point of view, that can that can be very helpful to say that if some unwanted user or unwanted application has been trying to tamper around with the configuration files or some uh, information that should not be accessed by other files. So. Uh, uh, open snoop uh, is one of the tool that is basically it is what it is doing is internal it is using the trace points and the k probes um, hooks as such uh, 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 that gets attached at the beginning of this open system calls as such okay so the parameters that gets passed to the open system call is the file name uh, and the param uh, mode and all that information as such Similarly, for the read and write, we pass the file descriptor, uh, the buffer, and the size as such. So, uh, collecting this information helps to uh, uh, know that what are the uh, accesses that are happening from which process as such. Similarly, uh, another is the stat snoop. Basically, that uh, that does not provide what uh, internally file is read or written, but it provides the information of the uh, file of uh, file as such, like um, the metadata related to the files, the inode information, and the access access permissions, and all those things can be collected through the start start snoop uh, tool as such. Basically, it uh, goes and attaches to the various the variants of a start system call as such. Okay. So here, this uh, this is just a snippet that I have taken, uh, as such. Like uh, here, in this case, you see that this is the uh, uh, it tells the path. Uh, here, in this case, it um, also gives you the uh, file list uh, FDs that has been written and the command what has what is going and trying to access that file, starting on that file as such. Okay. And you, in case of open snoop, you get the PID, uh, then uh, the process name as such, and then the file descriptor that, that is written. And if there has been error onto that um, uh, on that file that is when that has been opened as such, that has also been uh, given as such. Okay. Okay. So this to summarize here, uh, just to talk about the BCC tools here, I. Uh, cover only two or three that is open snoop, start snoop, and exact snoop uh, covering the file access and the process uh, lifecycle. 
uh, the BCC tools uh, uh, provides a rich set of tools that can go and look at the system at the, way, uh, at the various levels as such. So here in this case, the, there are the tools that, uh, that, uh, that can be used at the application level, user space, and the tools that are used at the kernel level for the different subsystems as such. So here in this case, what we looked, uh, sorry, we looked at this uh, uh, two commands that basically uh, interfaces at the system call uh, uh, level as such. Uh, basically, open snoop does the open system call, uh, start snoop does the start system call as such. Similarly, information for VFS can be done, can be captured through this set of tools that is file life, file top, like something like a top command that gives the information of the files at the VFS layer. Similarly, there are most file system specific one, volume manager and block layer. So basically this covers the whole of the IO path as such. So at the network, uh, network path, the information can be uh, captured or collected at the socket layer level or at the network, uh, what you say, layer three, layer four, TCP IP layer, as well as at the network driver or layer two, what we can say as such. And other than that, then we can also collect the information of the, uh, about the memory management. Like uh, some of the tools like memory leak, actually it gives an, it gives quite a detailed information as such like uh, provides a stack trace of um, what are the processes that have uh, 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 allocated the memory but not yet freed as such. So this memory leak also basically uh, uh, help to collect if some process is trying to just keep on allocating the memory not frame, leading to some out of memory kind of situation. So this leak is one of the tools that uh, it's quite handy as such. Similarly at the socket, at this sh um, scheduler level to understand if uh, the, how the contact switching is happening and uh, what what process is taking time as such. So the, the, the hooks can be attached at the scheduler level as such. So all in all, this, this, this is quite a um, resourceful tools that can be used as a, as a first step, explore with these tools, and then we can go and uh, write the BPF programs for that. So basically, like uh, here, I just wanted to elaborate uh, that uh, uh, there can be multiple sources of events to provide the visibility as such of the entire stack and to broadly categorize this instrumentation of the programs the, uh, as a dynamic instrumentation and the static instrumentation that is happening at the uh, user, user space as well as kernel space as such. So particularly if talking about the kernel uh, for a dynamic instrumentation that goes through the kbrops function, uh, kbrops interface where you can attach uh, the BPO program to the kbrop as such. And static uh, instrumentation at the kernel level is done through the trace points as such. So basically, trace points are the is the framework where it uh, the code is uh, implemented inside the kernel itself. The trace uh, trace point events has has been implemented as such. Okay, so the static uh, points are being added through the trace points. Okay, and similarly for the user space, you have the U probes and the uh, this USDT, that is user statically defined trace points as such. So another tool that, uh, that uh, I mean, uh, first is BCC, then the other is the BPF, tra BPF trace as such. It provides um, a bit of programming kind of interface, but not in a very detail, but a one-liner kind of um, uh, commands can be uh, written as such. So here in this case, you can specify whether you are doing a static instrumentation or a, a dynamic instrumentation by specifying K probe or trace points as such. So here in this in this first example, hmm, uh, the BPF trace, what we are telling is uh, use the K probe instrumentation and uh, attach the uh, program to the DOSIS open. Uh, kernel function. So basically, this is the function that gets called when an open system call is the basically the kernel code path for the open system call from the application comes to the open system call handler, and from the uh, 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 ultimately this is the 
function that would get executed. And here in this case, you can um, all right, some printf that uh, when this do this open call uh, function current function is executing, print the uh, print what is the process that is uh, executing this particular kernel function and what is the argument as such. Similarly, uh, for the another way is like you can use the trace points. Uh, and in this example, uh, 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 trace points can, you can specify uh, uh, trace points as um, entering the system call or exiting the system call. Those uh, can give that probes that time as such. So says read, uh, enter the, uh, collect the information when uh, entering the read system call as such. So information can be collected at the beginning of the system call as well as at the end of the system call as such. So end of system call would give you the behavior of that whole system call, how, what, ha what it has done and the return parameters help you to decide on that. Like here in case of a read, the return value would be the number of bytes that has been read by that system call. So that information can be collected as such. Similarly, information can be collected for the process. Uh, whatever the bit, what you see uh, through this exact snoop can be done more elaborately through using the BPF uh, trace uh, functionality as such. Right? Let me show you one example. So when you are uh, when you are doing programming, uh, uh, so here this exam this uh, this is an example for um, uh, writing the BPF program using C as such. So in case of uh, when you are writing the program, uh, as we have seen in the previous slides uh, as such. Mm, let me go at the big name. So here in this case, um, what we see that uh, uh, the BPF program has to be attached to a particular hook as such. In this example, exact system call. So there, uh, when we are uh, doing the programming, there are the two parts. One is the BPF program itself. And then there is an application that would uh, go and load that BPF program as such. And then there is another instance where the actual activity is happening, which would trigger this hook as such. Okay. So when we are doing the programming, what we, what we do is we, we implement this uh, BPF program as such. And uh, uh, in that case, that uh, whole of this program had to be compiled into a bytecode and then loaded into the memory as such. Okay. So when we're doing the program, we have the two instance. One is the BPF program, and another is the application that will go and load the uh, BPF program. And that is done with the help of the library function, libbpf as such, okay? okay. <laughs> Let me do. So here in this example, uh, and there are like what kind of hooks that are being used, whether it's a trace point or it's a k-probe as such, based on the macros are being defined as part of the libbpf as such. So here in this case, if we look at this uh, thing, here in this case, uh, uh, this application BPF program is going to get hooked to the uh, 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 kernel function, v v VFS read entry function, and it is going to use a k-probe mechanism for doing that. Okay. So that, that is um, done through this uh, uh, macro as such. And here in this case, I'm just not doing anything, just a printf, uh, but it's a, a library function that has been used as such. So similar here is another example. Mm. 
uh, for doing the uh, working at the system call that is a link uh, and link system call as such okay. the apis that are there so here in this case what we'll do is the for the semantics of this api is that the name uh, of the program and then what are the parameters that the this input parameter is one that goes corresponding to this kernel api as such okay and here in this case you can implement what uh, uh, whenever that hook is been triggered as such what has to be implemented what has to, what you want to collect as such that that can be done here in this case like we are um, uh, collecting the process id and then um, the file name uh, corresponding to the link unlink uh, a link uh, tool uh, particularly the system call that passes the file name that has to be unlinked as such so that information and then that can be so here in this case this implementation whatever the logic has to be uh, has to be applied or whatever the information uh, from the observability point of view what information has to be collected that would go as part of this uh, bpf program as such now in case of open snoop or in the exact case what we saw that was a file name its parameters and all those things so that is basically and that's it's uh, uh, as the as the code a uh, part of that uh, bpf program as such okay now here in this case if you look at this is another uh, probe and k return probe is there so probe basically uh, is triggered at the starting of the function and return uh, return uh, probe is at the end exit part of that so th that way you can uh, put the put the hooks at the exit entry or exit as such Um, another example I wanted to show. Okay, so here in this case, this is an example. Another example that is there for the LSM hooks as such. Uh, okay, I'm sorry that the time it has time. So this is an example. I'll just wrap up. That is, this is an example that uh, will program for a LSM. Attached to the LSM hooks as such, particularly the LSM hook defined to task free. That is, um, when the task gets completed or exited, that time you can collect the information as such. Okay, so that's uh, the end of the time as such, and as well as the end of the session. I know it's not very much in depth, but it gives you an elaborate understanding on the observability that you can get started with and then develop on top of that as such. Okay? Thank you, guys.